That's the red light. Hello, welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly, bringing you Transformers news from around the world. This is episode 184. We are recording live, not on Monday the 1st, but Friday the 1st of March 2019. Tonight, sadly, we have the dregs of Toy Fair, uh, Toy Fair week to dig through, um, but there is some is some more right stuff there we can check out. There's some... No, there's not some nice art. We cut that story. <laughs> there's, uh, <laughs> some, there's some third-party figures coming out. Jada Toys are doing some die-cast versions of our uh, favourite figures as well. And we've got a lot more coming up after this. I've got to stop doing that. <laughs> Keep on adding, adding stuff to the uh, coming up on that's most likely going to be cut. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it happens. Then we're going to revise it before the show, maybe, because we, we always forget that. I sat here for the last 45 minutes with my children watching in The Incredibles, and the run sheet was just sitting here open, and I never even <laughs> went that far <laughs> into it. Uh, but anyway, uh, all right. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Hello. Good evening. I am Brad Ostrom Prime. Joining me as the dominant duo, we have Max coming to us from South Australia once again. Max. How is your Friday night going? A uh, bit hot and bothered, to be honest. Had a nice 40 degree consistent week here. So, yes. Trying to, trying to just sit down and relax, talk about some Transformers. Uh, two weeks ago, I rode summer off. I've gone, that's it. Summer's over. It's cooling down. The night's getting cold. I even had the fire going twice in, the, uh, in mid-March. I don't know how much you're allowed to do that, but oh. I'll. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> we in mid mid Feb, it dropped down below ten degrees two nights in a row. I think it got to six here one night, and the fire got lit because children would not get out of bed in the morning, and I was feeling those chilly, chilly. Yeah, okay, maybe maybe we can make some exceptions for country Victoria. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, now we're we're back up to twenties at night, and yeah, this god awful summer heat has come back, <laughs> unfortunately. But uh, looking. at Looking at next week anyway, it's going to drop off by Wednesday. So hopefully that's it. There's been plenty of um, storm clouds going around, so we need some rain. We need some rain, some cold weather. <laughs> but then we'll be complaining because it's too cold. Because that's just what we do. Yeah, that's why, we, that's why we're here. We have a you know, beautiful uh, social gel going on. We just spend two hours ragging the weather instead of Transformers. Yeah, oh, we normally keep it keep it to about ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes, as you said, we do have some Transformers news to talk about. Are you ready to get into it? I suppose we're going to have to be. Let's go. <laughs> oh, ready and ready and willing. Right. Do the whoo! There it goes. Do do do. Packa packa pow. Rightio, Bot Shots is back this week. Um, coming back live with the uh, weekly Transformers competition in the uh, TCCA group this week. The first winner back again from last year, Kyle Kirkwood. Um, I'm guessing that's Phoenix. Is oh, uh, is that? Yeah, that, that would be. Yeah, Phoenix because it's not crumbling apart. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not Kronos. Um, but uh, he's helping Kyle open up some uh, a new figure. I'm guessing that's the Zeta Toys logo, upside down. Oh, yes, it says it's upside down there. Okay. <laughs> Should have looked closer at that. Um, congratulations, Kyle. You are the March Week 1 winner. You're going into the draw for the uh, March winner's spot. And um, if you do win that, you'll be in the running for a prize at the end of the year. Um Head over to transformerscca.com for all the uh, information, details, and past winners, and even the uh, competition threads as well there, so you can see what the other figures or what other sh photos were like in the competition. Yeah, we've got a healthy archive build up by now, don't we? We do, we do. And um, I think we're going to use reuse some of these photos for conventions, just putting them out there um, on display so people can see what people or well, what members in the club and that are doing with their figures. Actually, that's actually really not a half bad idea. So I'm gonna have to steal that for the next show here. <laughs> <laughs> We're thinking ahead. All right, getting into some news this week, and <laughs> this has caused a lot of um, a lot of arguments and a lot of laughter. Um, 
we're getting one more repaint of the classic MB10 mold. Personally, I'd say it's the best mold. <laughs> but um, <laughs> oh, what it Atmos Safari shoes, basketball shoes. I'm guessing because there's a basketball in the uh, thing. Because I do like, like LeBron James branded. It says LeBron the Atmos Safari LeBron version, but then it's a night. Okay, so it's a Nike Atmos in Safari colors, LeBron version. I don't know anything about shoes, so this is just <laughs> going off of his article here. I, I guess that's what that means. Now, LeBron then, James, is is he one of the Aussies who went over there and tried to make it big? He is absolutely not Australian. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, Let, let's, let's talk the Transformers side of things. <laughs> um, another shoe brand. We've seen, we've seen it before with the uh, the Megatron NFL star, I think it was, that had a – the um, it was the – Generations stealth bomber Megatron, I think, that got repainted to match. Yeah, his... they did the little deluxe one that was in, um, like those sort of bright yellow. Hmm. Oh, no, it wasn't bright. It was bright purple, wasn't it? Yeah, it was that Septicon purple because he had They've the done Megatron shoe related things. There was that, there was the, uh, like the transforming shoes, and now <laughs> they're doing, a uh, like these MP10 repaints. Yeah, even without the MP10, like I just find it funny that American sporting whatever is going to because this is Takara, not not Hasbro US. So um, the fact that they're going to Japan <laughs> to get Takara to do this sort of stuff, and um, I don't know if we've got. I guess we do um, to get this MP10 repaint. I, I do love the color. It's sort of it's similar to the Bape, how it's got that sort of camouflage stripe around it where the silver stripe would normally be. But um, for 100, 160 US, it might be another chance to get the uh, get another version of MP10 before he's gone. Yeah, it's a surprising last hurrah for a mold, I guess. It's an interesting looking figure too. It looks like you know one of those. Like, it, it makes me think of that weird construction repaint that the fans projected of Steel Core, you know, or like a G2 con it, Constructor Con. Like, it looks very industrial as opposed to, you know, hip, cool Nike basketball shoe, you know? It, it, well, it just evokes construction machinery to me. Well, and that's, yeah, that was going to be my next suggestion. If you made his calves the same yellow, you could nearly put cat. Earth moving like cat diesel power or something on his shoulders instead of the Autobot logo, like his <laughs> bit of cat equipment or something. Um, but yeah, they're, they're just trying to get a little bit more use out of MP10, and that's a shame because here's another repaint of MP10, yet they're still going to make the new MP44? Question mark. Um, $600. So. <laughs> Or well, four fifty or whatever it is yen four hundred fifty thousand yen. So you'd think all these repaints would have paid for a new prime outright, and it'd be two hundred <laughs> two hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, it's still six hundred bucks, and uh, by the time we get to the exclusive repaints, maybe forty four. Wouldn't surprise me by the end of its lifespan, we see it going over a grand. Yep, and it's it's box much similar to the uh, the Bape and. The Evangelion and all the other, and even this the Super Seven, Super Seven, Seven Eleven, MP10 as well, where you get the Energon Axis uh, Blaster and the Matrix. Yeah, <laughs> so not not the most comprehensive package, but I guess the Deco on the Prime itself is the main appeal here. Mm. It's interesting to look at the uh, that leopard striping, you know, so subdued on the figure like we're branding it as the atmos safari lebron james version right like and then the fuse themselves you know lean into that with the big you know leopard panning everywhere but mm. the figure just has these little stripes on the arms and that's it um, which is probably for the best because it looks awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> Stuff well, like the atmos on the side i could sort of see because it's like uh you know you can like I said, it looks like this construction equipment, right? So you could just pass it off as being construction branding or something. But then you just have LeBron on Optimus Prime's shoulder, which is mm. 
a bit surreal to look at. <laughs> yeah. Even if he had that leopard sort of print on the silver bit around his chest there, just because that's where it would have been if it was in the original G1 figure. But mm. I think that's all we need to <laughs> need to say about this. <laughs> You're not are you after another MP10? Uh, I think I don't think I own any MP10 molds anymore. So Ooh. hard pass. Well, I, I got myself all geared up for MP44, and it turned out to be. Over half a thousand dollars. <laughs> so now, now I'm in a weird state where it's like, mm, do I use my third party IDW Optimus as just a generic masterpiece one? <laughs> I mean, knowing me, I wind up spending a ludicrous amount on MP44 anyway. But uh, in Won't also all... <laughs> ludicrous news, what exactly am I looking at here? Um, also coming out, some officially licensed, and this may be a return to. Transformers building block systems. Um, unfortunately, this isn't Creo and it isn't Lego at all. It um, it seems to be more of a Duplo style building block system. Um, it doesn't make anything. It's just forty two pieces of blocks, and you get some um, some of those sort of evergreen design cardboard cutouts to stand with these blocks. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh... Hmm. Uh, it's, just, it's literally just there's no thing that's being built here. It's just a bunch of blocks. Um, yeah, there's no set to be built. No, it's just blocks, and then Transformers cardboard cutouts, and then they're all it's just, it's all multicolored. So it's not as if you can build a fort out of it. It's only forty two pieces. <laughs> yeah. The most interesting thing I notice here is that they've changed Megatron's design to Evergreen to be more cyberverse and that Starscream looks remarkably like the Flame Toys model kit version. <laughs> Beyond that, this is just a confusing looking piece. Yeah. Plus you get all the stickers, you get some faction symbols, you get Buckethead, you get Prime, you get Bumblebee. <sighs> the number 84, I suppose. Because that means oh it does mean something okay yeah look yeah at, i'm just to be honest i just keep on looking at the character designs because it's the only interesting thing like there's weird choices made here like you know prime's got, chest one, looks two, like three, make three. toys prime megatron's like cyberverse missing his fusion cannon you know starscream looks like the flame toys figure made into a legends class and then <laughs> bumblebee is some of the ugliest legs i've ever seen on a transformer just, there's just some weird art choices here. I don't know. And I don't know why this is a thing that's sticking out to me, but it really is. Yeah, and now it's got $6.30. I'm guessing that's US, possibly. But if you want something like this, then you could just get... Print it get, off. Yeah, get, get, you can go to Harvey Norman, get the, go to Google and Google Evergreen characters and put them on the... A floppy disk or, oh, okay, I went there. Um, put them onto a thumb drive and um, just go to Harvey Norman or whatever for 10 cent prints and get a 6B4. Yeah, it was just sort of thing. Cut them out. Like I was buying a Figma figure a while back and I was like, oh, should I get the exclusive version because it comes with an exclusive accessory, which is a cardboard, like it's a just a flat cardboard piece because that fits in the art style. Like, And I was like, well, hold on. If it's just a flat cardboard piece that's been laminated, couldn't I just laminate a piece of paper and cut that up? <laughs> yeah, it's just very strange to me. Mm. There, then there's far better designs out there that you can get off uh, Google Images to print out to make a little stand. We're probably sticking stand. on this more than we should, aren't we? <laughs> we are. I suppose it is just a newspaper, a news agency gift. Yeah. Um, last week when we were talking about the Super 7 figures, we commented on how much cheaper they are than the uh, Ultimetal figures now. Ultimetal have come out at a recent convention. I don't know if it said there which one. No. They've come out recently um, with their final images of their Ultimetal Megatron, and he is bling with some chrome all over. <laughs> yeah, that's a questionable decision. Like, I'm not saying chrome doesn't work for Megatron, but it's very different to what they did for Prime, you know. 
Grant did not have that sort of finish on him whatsoever. It was just basically just, a, you know, the same sort of art style as MP10. I, this is confusing to me. It's one of those things too, like we can, oh, okay. I complain with the Masterpiece line how they do revisions every five to ten figures with going in new directions and all that. And here it's only the third figure and they're already going with a new new direction colour. As you're saying, that Prime was pretty much a matte red and that there was no not a lot of chrome bling on him. We're here. If you're going to do a sort of a, a plus or a exclusive version, then yeah, go full chrome. But this should be that sort of G1 grey, just that dull grey like the Masterpiece figure or something just to, to match. Because currently this figure and then it, that Optimus Prime wouldn't look good side by side. No, they definitely would not. This is... <laughs> And bear in mind also, this thing is a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you could just buy the MAS one for you know 300, 400 bucks, and maybe be happier because you're not constantly in fear of it, you know, breaking. Because if you break it, you've broken a one thousand dollar piece. Mm. Well, I, yeah, and I see a lot of the sort of the Combiner Wars, Titan Return, Megatron, this more than G one as well. Maybe just how blocky. Like his legs are, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a, it, if you're paying that much for a figure, you want it be want it to be pretty good. <laughs> um, coming up next, and we've got a couple of stories here from Shockwave Labs. They've um, they're releasing some LED light systems for some uh, retail figures here for the Siege Voyage Optimus Prime. Um, they got a unit here that can go into his chest and you can light his darkest hour. Unfortunately, he can't pull his <laughs> canopy windows open <laughs> to uh, bring that matrix out. But No, I suppose even MP10 can't pull that off. Just yeah, yeah. Maybe half the reason they're making a new one anyway. Yeah, but that's the modular system there for it. Enclosed it's quite battery. A, a clever little way to approach it, really. Just that was a gap in his chest, make a big block that sits in there. That's why super simple stuff. I wonder why that gap's there to start with. Is there something in the original I, figure that should was, go there? Hold on. I gotta Google this now because I'm <laughs> I feel <laughs> like I should, I should know this. Yeah. Like I did I just miss that there's a gimmick in his chest for some reason. Like Cause I'm I'm thinking sort of the um power I think it was power of the primes where they had the the gimmick where you could play peg power the prime masters in the chest. Yeah, and it looks else. set for uh like a prime master matrix type thing, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. And I, I don't see any I haven't seen any mention of that. If I'm being an idiot and I right now, I need you to cut this because I I could be sounding <laughs> completely stupid. Um well, I can sound like thing. more of an idiot. We've I'm, we've talked about the Siege Voyager Prime before, and I don't remember even seeing photos of his windows opening. So I don't know if there's some mods going on here, or because even the um the big Evolution Prime, the leader one that had um. Okay, so there's yeah. So just looking at it on TF Wiki now, um. This is why we didn't hear about it because it was like an unintended thing or not a marketed thing. So if you open the windows in truck mode, he has a matrix there. But because of the way he transforms, he doesn't show in his chest in robot mode. Yeah. Um, and so just either by coincidence or design, you can fit one of those prime masters or matrix cores or what have you. Make any of those var variant of things can fit in his chest. So it's an unmarketed feature, but yeah, you can fit that one of those matrix things in there. Um, and I that's, suppose they've just taken advantage of that. That's it weird. seems like originally the way they built the transformation, it just so happened that, oh, there's a gap in his chest. And they're like, well, what if we rework and like re sculpt things within his chest so that you can repurpose one of those old matrixes and put it in there? This 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 question might not go anywhere, but in Combiner Wars we had the Combiner Wars Prime that combined. In Titans Return we had the Triple Changer 
the uh, the G G two like the tanker prime. That was power of the primes, wasn't it? Or, uh, or Titan, Titan's return. Titan's return. Yeah, that was the tanker prime. Yeah, tanker prime. Voyager as well. Did it? It's it didn't have a headmaster, did it? Oh, it did. Yeah, that definitely had a headmaster. Okay. Then we went into power of the primes, and we had the leader one that again that evolution with the um out Orion packs that would become his chest. Yeah, I can't. So now, did that, now, like Power Master Prime come out in Titans Return. In everyone was an Ultra Magnus retool because that yeah yeah that had a headmaster didn't it yeah so it was like they did that and then they did the a similar sort of thing in Powerful Primes didn't they. And so now, weird. It's it's a, it's like there's a lot of like, primes recently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is. That's why that's why I'm having trouble remembering all. But it's sort of it'd be like if Siege Hound had a headmaster. It's just like one of these old gimmicks from a previous line that somehow is still in these new figures. I mean, it's you know there has been a lot of interplay. We're in the Prime Wars trilogy. There was a lot of crossing over. Yeah. So yeah. you know, like the little Matrix cores use the same. Uh, skeleton, I suppose you could say, as the headmasters, but it was never explicitly like, oh, hey, here's the interplay between these two lines. They never said, oh, hey, Power of Primes, you can put these combiner limbs on the combiner wall stuff, except like you absolutely could. Mm. I'd say so it was never stuff where I went, hey, you know, there's cross, there's integration here. It was just sort of, yeah, just by happenstance, all these lines uh, share commonality with each other. And Siege has been a bit more of a departure from the styles of those lines. Um, but still see, like, I think we're still seeing, like, little vestiges of the Prime Wars trilogy here and there. I wonder if, um, and this might come back in a few weeks' time, I wonder if, because uh, we had that leader for Power of the Primes, I wonder if this was going to be a deluxe and they've decided to hold off, because we normally... Especially the movie lines, we get normally we normally get a prime in every size scale. Um, Do so we? I wonder. If, uh, oh, we used to. <laughs> it used. To, I, thought it, I think it's like they do all but one. Yeah, don't know. It's. I don't know why I'm pointing. No, I'm intention. just. It's I'm just, just wondering. Yeah, I'm just wondering if this is the power of the primes deluxe prime skeleton that never got used, so they've reused it here. I, th- I think it's, with the, I don't know, it seems to be quite in line with Siege as a whole. You know, that very, you know, just G1 with a bit more cyber training on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not the only one. Getting back to the, the story we're actually supposed to be talking about. Um, the light up effects, they've also made a set for the um, masterpiece, movie masterpiece barricade as well, which. I haven't heard a lot of good things about it. I've got really? the deluxe. I, I okay. could tell you great things about it. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Has it even been released? Well, it's, oh, it, it had a really strange release where it just yeah. sort of came out in various iterations over the course of six months. And obviously, since if there's good things to be talked about, then obviously people have got it in yeah. hand. So, it's, dirt for me. I but... think it's one of the better, like regarded as one of the better movie masterpieces. I might be thinking about Ironhide. Yeah, that one is. I think that one's quite notoriously bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, I do laugh here. How, uh, laugh at this. How it looks like his head's just a mask on that. It doesn't look like there's any depth to the head any at all. But um, I don't think we're not. Well, we're not here to talk about the figure. They've um, again the the lighting unit for this, and I think this is the main reason I want to talk about it, is just the fact you've got this power cell. With the uh, wires, this could be modified. I could see this in your masterpiece Datsuns. I could see this in any of your retail figures as well. If you want to make, um... it's like quite a small and flat piece, isn't it? So you could, yeah, you have any sort of cavity, you could theoretically slot it in there. Yeah, yeah. It, it might not help with transformation, but again, if your bots <laughs> stay in bot mode for the <laughs> most of the time, then just a, a little light up accessory like this, I reckon, could. Um, be quite beneficial especially with how good it looks on that barricade like the the way i, I guess it is a, you know a promo shot but the way the lights and because it comes out from it's not just straight you know put forward point 
light blaring out. It's the light is seated in sort of a deeper point of his chest. Mm. So you get a lot of there's like a lot of depth to overlight is showing. So it, it gives the figure this sense of depth, I guess, and uh, you know a bit of complexity because you have a light on different surfaces, and so it just yeah just adds a bit of realism to it. Yeah. Yep, and here obviously they've made it so it pegs onto his back when he's in robot mode. Um, so it looks like this... it definitely doesn't carry through the transformation, which no, I mean, no. In all fairness, I shouldn't really expect. No. Um, but I can see this with the movie masterpiece Optimus Prime as well, just to illuminate those lights on his hips, like the uh, the character did in the 07 movie. Get out of the goddamn car! <laughs> yeah. Um, and also. They've, it's also got a accessory to fit with Trypticon, um, which I that looks fantastic. <laughs> oh yeah, you know I was talking about the depth of the light on Barricade. Now this is like that, but to the next level. Just you know, yeah. have that seated deep within the mouth, and all those little ridges and teeth and everything on Trypticon just make that look beautiful. Yeah, and even just the like, even just an image of that. Titan Master in front of him there, and you've got those spotlights shining down on him. That's I absolutely love that. I know that is, yeah, that is just and beautiful. That's, and that's the unit there. I think, like, just having the you know, these slightly larger and more powerful LEDs on Trypticon, you know, sort of uh, gives adds to that sense of scale with a figure, like, it makes him seem a lot more imposing. Mm. And it's good too, like, you've got the good thing. <laughs> you got the connector there, so like even if you're going to have him in in Trypticon mode, like there we've got um, is it full tilt on his chest? Uh, yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but um, when when you've got sort of his chest covered, you could unplug that at the back so you don't have the lights trying to push through that that um, translucent green, and then just have him on, plug it back in when you got that flap down. Even now, just trying to think where that all goes in city mode. <laughs> That'd be probably some good spotlights when it's in city mode as well. Yeah. Do you, do you own a Trypticon? I do. It's probably my favorite figure from the last year. <laughs> Although it's probably a 2017 release. So. <laughs> yeah. mm. uh, I'd, I don't yeah, know. I don't know if I'd go. We'll, I'll have to wait and see how much of, they're going to be. Does that area down the bottom, like, does that end up on his. Stomach in tripping mode in city mode or on top, on top because okay, so um, you, yeah you either, either side either side that folds down to become sort of wings at the side in um in both city mode and jet mode so those lights will be pointing straight up in the air from memory yeah which is which for a city mode kind of fits quite well like especially it's all a military base type thing yeah plus plus how many times especially. <laughs> You see sort of spotlights just shining straight up in the air. Yeah, I don't know if you get much use out of the mouth Ooh. one, but... I wonder if you get a set of some of those little uh, toy hack toy hack stickers and mm. stick a faction symbol over it and have that project up onto a roof. Yeah. I mean, interestingly here, it does look like um, the two LEDs here are connected by one wire. Which I, seems to me like, you know how Trypticon has a gimmick where you can like feed the Titan Masters through his mm. esophagus? Looks like the wiring there uses that to connect for two. So there's a battery pack on the chest mounted lights uh, that feeds both that and the mouth mounted ones. So I, I don't know how well that would go in transformation because I, I don't know where his head ends up. Exactly. Uh, his head doesn't move, his head just stays on his back. Okay, so you. This one would carry through transformation then. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty um, good. The only thing you'd have to sort of keep an eye on is when you're rotating because the head's got a neck rotation. Um, if you sat there and just started rotating your head around, 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 you're going to twist those wires up to the point where they're going to probably pull out of somewhere or it might just pull the unit out of the back of his head. Yeah, it's true. I mean, no people will be smart enough to not do that. Well, again, this, this I mean, is... You'd hope. Yeah, this is for figures that are on your display and not being played with, so not by children anyway. <laughs> um, 
Moving on to something again that you probably wouldn't want children to play with. Zeta Toys have revealed uh, ZV01 Pioneer, which is their version of Bumblebee movie VW Beetle Bumblebee. Um, Max, we'll talk before in the pre-show about uh, you after or you got the uh, free A. They call it deluxe, isn't it? Uh, yeah, because it's separate to their premium scale stuff. Yeah, so it's a little bit, it's, little bit smaller in both price and scale. Yeah, so that, that's meant that a lot of people have jumped on that just instinctively because like, oh, well, there's a cheaper 3A figure and it's the only actually accurate <laughs> version of this Bumblebee, so we'll go for that. Mm. Whereas now you have this guy coming along and actually <laughs> transforming. Uh, there's no shots of it in alt mode, but again, like parts count, you've got his blade on his wrist, you've got a, um, the... I'd call it the Waspinator face <laughs> or Stinger face. Yeah. Um, sort of a, a version a version of that hammer he had from the last night. Seems entirely superfluous. But <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, sh- it showed up in concept art for that weird cut Vietnam War scene from yeah, when it was a yep. very different movie. Yep. yep uh, the hand blaster yeah. as well. I think the... Uh, the thing is, like, there's less of an expectation for the sort of accessories that this will come with compared to the free A ones. So, you know, transforming figures typically don't have uh, swappable, swappable hands because they don't do too well with transformation. Whereas a premium action figure like the three A one, well, it's just an expectation, but the hands will be swappable. Mm. So, it's you know, d- different accessories here. And that's that's sort of one of the things. If you're not, if you don't have an engineering budget. Or don't have to worry about the engineering of a transformation. You can put that into the accessories. Have hands that detach, plug in weapons, um, swords, maces, lights, LEDs. God knows what else. Yeah, it seems like a toy world slash Zeta toy slash you know whoever the hell like whatever's going on with this group of people now. Like that seems to be a place to go in theory for transforming versions of a bumble movie characters. Because they've done this, they said they're going to attempt Shadow and Dropkick. And I say attempt because that's what they said. They said, we'll try and do this, but, you know, God knows how that's going to go. Look Make sure we change the those. And then <laughs> yeah. they're also announced that they're doing a Prime as well. So and this is a place for transforming versions. And look how tidy that is. Yeah. Oh, even keep the uh, sort of spinal column detail. Mm, yeah. That you Like, it's really apparent in uh, the start of the movie. Yeah. Just kind of yeah, can... one of the nicer details from the robots in Bumblebee. Yeah, and we talked about the masterpiece one about the legs and the feet and just how tidy this looks for transforming yeah. into simply, well, essentially the same, same uh, alt mode as the original MPB. Anyway, oh yeah, like it's 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 actually quite an interesting thing to see. You know, the different um, takes on. You know, like uh, different designs of the same character forming the same robot, uh, old mode. And this is so, yeah, com- comparing this tall. to the movie masterpiece Bumblebee. I think this easily blows it out of water. Like the discussion here is between this and the three A version. There is no discussion between this and the movie masterpiece. Mm. Which hasn't hasn't really been much for discussion with third party versus official for a long time, especially masterpiece um but now sort of going into this third party versus official for movie figures and stuff like that like we've we've commented before and brought up before unique toys and what they've done with pure kill and their prime as well and the other figures they've got on the boards coming up for release yeah i think the uh official versus third party discussion is most pertinent when it comes to movie stuff nowadays because is, I think, especially because there's two distinct scales operating, and then it becomes, you know, even more of a discussion when you into stuff like the Bumblebee movie, where it changed production half, like sort of production direction halfway through. So you have, you know, two rather distinct designs from Bumblebee. So it's like, oh, what are you going to go with? You're going to go with the official product that's very inaccurate to the movie, or the third party or licensed version that's highly accurate. And that's sort of a deep core thing with collecting. Like, okay, yes, 
you can buy the Studio Series Bumblebee for thirty dollars. Um, it's not entirely accurate. The engineer is just pretty much basic for a deluxe figure, um, and you're paying you're paying that price for that engineering. But if you're wanting, and if you're, I want the Bumblebee cast on my shelf um, as accurate as possible. Well. Surely that's going to involve paying more for a third-party company with what they offer and not staying with official. Yeah, and especially when you think about, um, like, the potential of, you know, the later stuff when it comes to Toy World and 3A, right, where Toy World says, oh, we're going to drop kick and shatter, um, and Prime as well. It's like, well, you think about how much of those are going to have to transform. That's, you know, very distinct route modes into two very separate alt modes that twice over and then three a's done like 250 dollar blitzwing right and so if you want it inferior bumblebee's got quite a small cast but if you want actual accurate versions of that cast you're gonna be forking over a lot of money for it hmm well and that's it and the general general theory is that bumblebee's the best live action movie so we're gonna want figures and characters from that film it's um, the first one i personally feel motivated to go out of my way to collect like a just a solid set of the core cast mm. and and we've talked again previously before about how hasbro's i think f- smartly going for individual robot alt modes for um shatter and dropkick both for car and um like car and jet or car and helicopter not trying to do the triple changer because i really don't think <laughs> They could get it on their budget. They got to work with where. Oh, I no, it's like Hasbro wait. just went screw it and did individual versions. Mm. So because well, I, I don't I know if it can be done. Well, I think that's for the best. I don't. I don't. Oh, want absolutely, to see it. especially yeah. in the case of Dropkick, where he like the car version that they made is just straight up Dropkick from towards from the first scene on Earth. Like that is accurate to the movie. Yeah. So you can't really complain there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be more, more than happy to pay thirty dollars for that and have it on the display shelf as Dropkick from Bumblebee. I don't. It, it's no different to um, Age of Extinction and the Last Night Drift. Yeah, um, absolutely. More, well, more so, especially last when he's night. got no visible helicopter parts. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. like he's quite a distinct Mercedes design in Last Night. So yeah. But even even Age of Extinction, he transformed once to in the desert. His only real helicopter junk he's got is his swords, which, of course, toys are going to make those into the, his rotor blades. And he transformed. He transforms again later on when they get to KSI, and it's. I don't really need, <laughs> don't really need a helicopter drift, even though we got to see one last week out of that dropkick mold. Uh, it's retool. funny how that helicopter one, which is very much a secondary mode with less kibble on it in robot mode turned out as the more accurate drift figure mm. again that you got you got a toy budget you got a size budget trying to get the most detail you can in there and yeah. back to this guy better. Better. <laughs> what would you what would you say between the well, so we've got three major bumblebees on the market right now or four if you count the studio series so 3a zeta toys masterpiece studio series what's it for you both for Bumblebee himself and like collecting the movie as a whole. I personally like this one looks the best in robot mode. We'll have to wait and see how it all condenses down into old mode, but again, it's a V-Dub Beetle, so I don't see it being too hard to, or it's going to be hard to do, but I don't think the old mode's going to look that bad. Yeah, it seems to be a lot of it and just basically on his back and in his lower legs. Yeah, and of course, like ultimately, yes, you'd go to Pseudo Series because that is supposed to be Hasbro's definitive version of Bumblebee. But I'm um, I'm just after that one one character. There's there's been a few figures like I'd happily sell. Actually, I did happily sell um, Age of Extinction Lockdown, and I'd I'd love to get Pyrakill one day. Um, Although its price has probably doubled <laughs> because yeah. of how good that figure is and word of mouth, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is the thing. Is that, well, you do have a lot of options nowadays. You know, you're not just stuck with going for one thing, going for one avenue. Like 
movie stuff mm. all of a sudden became maybe the most varied place in the Transformers market. Yeah. But at least we've seen the movie and now we, we're seeing these figures come out and seeing how good they look and we can pre-order, we can do what whatever we need to with them. It's one thing we didn't me- oh I didn't mention with um, the whole news about the, the animated Netflix TV series that's coming. Like, it's media for Siege that's beyond Siege. We we said the same thing with Titans Return and Combiner Wars when Machinima brought those out after the fact. I need media for these figures to collect. There's nothing... Siege isn't tooting any horns or nothing. I've, my son's yeah, just I think because been... there's a difference between making the toy, the toy line after the media and the, and the media after the toy line. Yeah, yeah. Well, my, my son's just been on the computer the last few days. He's been getting deep into false War 4 and Fall of Cybertron, the computer games. And I've been getting going. I've got, I don't know, you're talking better him. Had the, like, the War for Cybertron Prime and even the Fall of Cybertron Starscream out and just playing around with those figures again. And it just, I just really love one being able to play those games and even just on YouTube, I've got to spare 10 minutes just watching. There's been a couple of people doing playthrough videos but have made them into movie-length things. So you can go and watch a two-hour movie of War for Cybertron. It's playthrough, and it's not like you're sitting behind someone playing the PlayStation. You're bored. It, you're interested in what's going on on screen because it's telling the story, and it's just like a, a movie. Um, but you got the media. Animated. Animated. Love love the cartoon series. The figures are fantastic. Prime. Love the, the series, and you got the figures to go with it. Siege, I'm not, I'm not going to I think the thing with I'm Siege is it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, G1 stuff is a lot of the thing, a lot of the Transformers franchise has been just, well, you know, you all remember G1, so here's G1 as figures nowadays, whereas Siege is going to be like, yeah, we did G1, but we changed it up a bit, and now there's going to be a to- uh, cartoon based on it next year. Hmm. And like, but well, so at least- you sort of missed your mark, because it's not like, you're not saying this is a G1 cartoon. You're saying this is a Siege cartoon. And it'll probably just be a G1 cartoon. And, you know, as for how well it's going to go, it, you know, it's pretty up in the air at this point. But the the way that they market it is important. Because Fucking... no one gets excited. The reason why you get excited for Toy, the reason why I'm excited for 3A Bumblebee is because I watched Bumblebee and I loved it. And I love yep. that take on the character. So yep. I want, so I want to spend a lot of money on that figure. Exactly. Um, yeah. Whereas you don't get the same feeling going from a toy to a cartoon, right? You don't. I don't buy Siege Optimus Prime and go right. I want to invest a few hours watching Siege Optimus Prime in a cartoon. Is that thing doesn't happen? You get invested in the media first. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Can you imagine if we had? Um, the 84, 85 Transformers G1 toy line come out and not have any online media, no cartoon until in 86 Transformers the movie. No, yeah, one's, gonna buy, no, one, no one's gonna buy G1 Optimus Prime because he dies in the first five minutes, he's gonna be the wheelie of the franchise. It just it'd be a reverse Star Wars. Well, Please. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then that's just that's just our personal opinions on that. There's, there's plenty of people out there that are going gaga over Siege, and that's that's fine. Um, I think that's because Siege is, you know, it's Siege and you know the Primal Trilogy as well were very much you know G1 style things. So a lot of people, whether it's you know from older toy lines or G1 or ADW or whatever, uh, G1 is that. Um, Commonality, so everyone has that as a point of reference, so they can easily take, so they can easily say, "Hey, here's figures, and here's a cartoon later on." But the thing is, the cartoon suffers for it, and it's not a format that you could take with any other piece of Transformers media. Yeah, yeah, and no, that's it's sort of the same thing, like like Masterpiece, like Masterpiece. Now you're going for, well, you, you're collecting Masterpiece because one, you grew up with a G1 cartoon, or for me. Beast Wars and all the Beast Wars masterpiece coming out. You've you've had that 20, 30 years of nostalgia um, for it. And of course, you're not going to 
be releasing masterpiece siege figures <laughs> in 20 years time i hope but it's just if you want g like even the generation stuff at least some of the generations figures sort of touched on comic characters you've already read the comics for and enjoy the character for whether it's tarn whether it's um aren't they called spartan but the like your um which one sorry springer you like your, you you like your generation springer and figures the figures like that are sort of touching more on the comic characters that you've already known read and love the comic characters as well and now you're getting a figure for it one or two three years later um it's always it's always sort of proactive we we get the material the the media for something and love it so much and then want to get the figures where just what hasbro's doing at the moment with all these um trying to tie these cartoons or media into these figures and it's all coming years too late months years too late yeah it's a it ultimately it suffers for it hmm yeah. All right, should we? Any more yeah. thoughts on this? Or should we move on to the next story? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's just it's, but then it sort of goes the other way too, where it's sort of now third parties are jumping on the last night and Age of Extinction with figures from there, where we're sort of well removed from it as well. So it does go the other way as well. Um, like even like Tour Ward now, just only doing. The, the bulldog and stuff like that, the <laughs> film that came out two years ago. But at least we've still got nostalgia for that. It's not it's not a fact they're trying to tie into tie into that material. But, yeah. No, also it's a lot of if you look at a lot of the discourse and a lot of, you know, like West and Transformers Facebook groups and think you'd think that uh the, the movies are you know the most reviled things in existence, but Actually, in a lot of places, in particular places like China, Malaysia, or Philippines, people really do love the movies. So there's a market Prime, there. Prime One Studios, maybe, still maybe the majority. Cheaper. Yeah, they're, they're making <laughs> money somehow, aren't they? Yeah, there's still two thousand dollar Prime One Studios figures being made. <laughs> um, moving on because we need to. Uh, Jada Toys. Um, we've reported on Jada Toys previously where they do sort of die cast versions alt modes of the uh movie figures and now they're sort of touching on a bit of g1 as well um i really want to talk to this because last week we we're talking about those super seven figures and how you could have them on the display as a uh alt mode version of your masterpiece figures without having to transform and here we've got prime which looks fantastic I've, again i've never transformed my mp10 and i if this was 50 60 bucks i don't know how much they're going to be but if i could put this on display say this is what mp10 looks like or g1 prime looks like i'll, I'll be more than happy um i'm not one for transforming figures all the time especially masterpiece stuff but and that's not a g1 prime beside oh that's something smaller i think that's just the same brand in a different scale yeah and yeah, he's definitely i think the existence of these speaks to the idea that you know, the G1 vehicle modes are oh, what are just iconic as, as almost as iconic as the robot modes. Like, <laughs> Where's his trailer? <laughs> yeah. And that's... I, seeing a lot of praise for those Super 7 figures, um, how much Prime 1 and Freo statues sell, the whole notion of it needs to transform i think it's just that's just a uh a nitpick as much as oh the movie decepticons look like tinfoil <laughs> i i can't get behind it at all but um they've done they've they've had the uh i'm gonna say that's the age of extinction bumblebee we've seen I think that's the last night one because that's the ugly version <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But interesting enough, they're going to some more G1 stuff as well, which here we have a pretty much spot on looking tracks with the, uh, even down to having its head inside its behind the window, which is interesting. 
considering it doesn't transform. Um, but here we have a nice looking jazz as well, which looks a lot like the Toy World Downbeat. Um, obviously a non-transforming figure, die-cast car, but you can see the racing cage in there. There's no sign of any robot junk, but what is going off that track? So I didn't notice that before. What's but going on? His head is inside the windscreen. Yeah, I, I guess it's emerging the toy, which uh, yeah, kudos to them. Or have they just used the MP tracks alt mode as their reference? <laughs> no, but it's that, because that's quite deliberate, I think. That's because it is very much just his head face down. So I think I think they've gone, you know, screw it. Let's emerge the toy a bit. But even that jazz is the Toy World downbeat. It's got the real thick rear racing tie. That's not as much G1 Jazz cartoon version as what Toy World were doing with that alt mode for their figure. I reckon they've ripped artwork off here. Yeah, well, I mean, IDW artists have you know been seen just you know uh, drawing in third party figure designs and uh, you know making things look like keep the details of a toy. Like there was art for the new comic series that had Negatron with mushroom pegs on his fires. So, <laughs> like, it's... I imagine they just had said, hey, artist, draw this and we'll make it. And then artist drew it with a frame of reference and then they made it and by the time they made it, it's like, oh, no, this is based off of a third-party figure and this is based off of uh, the original toy. Well, one funny thing here is these are licensed, because non-transforming, these are licensed Hasbro... Um, cars i'd love if hasbro's going and just taking box art for third party companies and saying here this is what the car looks like yeah it's interesting yeah i mean yeah what i was saying earlier with like the way that these g1 cars have become iconic as well is something that we saw quite permanently in bumblebee right mm. where like it was a huge deal that Bumblebee is a Volkswagen. Now Bumblebee in that movie was one of the less G1 designs within the movie itself, of um, which I don't think is a particular issue because most people see that robot mode as Bumblebee now, not G1 Bumblebee. Uh, but you know that the him being a Volkswagen in that movie was like it's an important frame of reference. And seven, so you get to that scene right at the end where him and Prime are driving across a bridge. And he's a Camaro, and Prime is that very G1 vehicle. And that's like one of the, I thought that was one of the best scenes in the entire movie. Because you look at that vehicle and you go, you don't go, oh shit, that's a truck that's like Prime. You go, oh shit, that's Optimus Prime. You know, you, because that truck mode is as iconic as the, action, the robot mode itself. I wonder if you could do a little minor modification on that scene just to make it a little bit better because again he's in camaro mode not volkswagen mode like if if he was still in volkswagen mode and went across that bridge and pulled in beside prime like that and it's just straight up g1 it'd be i could be even better but then sort of have have a camaro go the other way and all of a sudden he scans it and transforms and then just like the film ends with prime sending out you see 07 movie prime going the other way like the alt mode and he scans and then just cuts to black as he scans it or something because it's sort of it is bridging the gap there where you've still got the g1 prime and you've got the camaro coming up beside him and not the volkswagen yeah i, I think that that was part of the whole thing of it being you know the alt mode being as iconic as well because you know the, like i said that version of Bumblebee has become the iconic Bumblebee for a lot of people. So, you know, that uh, the Camaro is as iconic as the Volkswagen now. And so, you know, the Camaro sidling up to that truck, pulling that trailer sort of is like, hey, it's like the present meeting the past, you know, stuff like that. And that's, that's like, you know, the meeting of two eras of Transformers media. Mm -hmm. And not to start the whole war again, but it was originally a prequel, and not a reboot. <laughs> it was indeed, but I, th I think that. So that, um, interestingly, that 
prime scene. I'm going off on tangent here, but I'm going to anyway because it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, that prime scene like, on the bridge, that was in the original cut of a movie, but the scene later in the forest wasn't. So I think the original idea was, you know, put that, pr- put that truck in the movie as like a little way, like a nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Hey, that's what G1 Prime looks like, right? This is sort of a idea. This is just sort of a nudge, nudge, wink, wink type thing. And then, but instead, you know, the movie became more of a reboot. And they're like, well, we've got this Prime scene here. Why don't we, this truck here. So why don't we just say, hey, Prime's on Earth and he looks like G1 Prime. Mm. Yep. Plus all, yeah, and that, that goes in the other thing that Hasbro have officially come out and said, yes, it's a reboot, not a prequel as well, just to end that little war that's been going on for months. Shall we move on to our last story? Yeah, it's uh, just the last a br- story. A brief one. Um, I do believe it's last week when we're talking about Ectotron and the Ghostbusters crossover. We had a nice big banner artwork of a lot of our uh, favourite G1 characters um, battling each other in a New York scape and Ecto-1 there with the uh, Ghostbusters battling as well. Um, In the middle, there was a little blacked out with, I can't recall if it was secret or, um, I think it said top secret or something in the middle of that banner, but... Now it's uh, been revealed that that banner is split up into five or four sections, and that is the cover for each of the uh, four comic um, issues to come out, and that issue free cover that was in the middle of its top secret is still top secret. We don't know what's going on in the middle of the art. <laughs> yeah. I, it, it seems like a lot of thing to be like, oh, hey, this is covering up. Ectotron, or this is covering up Ghost Star Scream, but both of those are in the picture, so no one really knows what that is. I'm no. I'm gonna wish my current idea is Go uh, on. Marshmallow Man Transformer, but beyond that, I got nothing. What about you? That's well, he, that's tran- a, he transforms into a big blob. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what he transforms into. To be honest, that. Uh, Blimp. Oh. There we go. Let's let's say transform a little blimp. Well, I think we've had a bl- I think we've had a blimp transform before, so let's go with that. We get a white prime arm here. Energy oh. X and a black uh-huh. or grey foot. Hey, you've got a better eye than I do. So that's your is your marshmallow <laughs> my, is your marshmallow man a prime? That's Marshmallow Man colours, isn't it? That's that. Oh, it's white. Well, you know, Marshmallow Man is white. It's, yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah. So, what have we said? So, what are we saying? Marshmallow Man Optimus Prime is the antagonist, maybe. <laughs> oh. It better have red eyes. <laughs> yeah, I don't know oh, what to make of that. Or maybe it's just no. Ghost Arm or something. Up. This could well be another MP10 repaint. Oh. It bloody what? <laughs> uh, the final hurrah for MP10 is a Ghostbusters repaint. The last I suppose time... they could just repaint the Siege one, but more money in MP10, I suppose. Well, just because it's got the little prime triangle and stuff on his wrist there. And, and, and it's clearly the energy on X that you get with MP10. Hmm. A couple of weeks ago, we dug deep into the Netflix series and <laughs> realised it might not be as good as we thought it was going to be. But in the here, <laughs> again, breaking news. On a plus side, I do like how Astro Train's head is underneath the back of his rocket. <laughs> there, the transformation <laughs> G one to a T. <laughs> it's just the G one toy, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So with cartoon colours. Yeah. All right. That's enough of that. <laughs> this is going to come back in a couple of weeks' time. <laughs> um, let me end Hangouts. Stop. All right. Oh, we're done. All right. Yes. <laughs> new acquisitions. <laughs> Max, do you have anything new this week? Uh, yeah, I um, I recently became a father, actually. 
So <laughs> I'd, like you, I'd like you to meet my son. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, a while back, mate, Tories decided to take their stab at uh, City Bots. And so this is their City Bot series. I got was it? Uh, Make Toys, MCB03, uh, Pandanists, I'd say. They're just great, big, it's like their own take on Scorponok, basically. And it is absolutely beautiful. It's just. <laughs> Don't drop about him. Flawless. Don't drop yeah, him. I'm terrified of dropping him. <laughs> uh, so I did have the Sentinel Scorponok to go with my Fort Max. That's the, poly- uh, the like the rubber or polystone statue one. Yeah, but the issue with that is the vinyl that it's made out of. Vinyl, yes. like it, it, yeah. So it's really poseable, like a vinyl figure, but the vinyl it's made out of doesn't hold up in the climate here. So, okay. you know, you'd have it posed, and you, it just had cracks slowly appearing, and eventually oh, the wrist no. just started to peel off from that. So I had to sell that on the cheap, and then pick up it's this beauty. Which yeah, isn't, let me tell you, this isn't breaking anytime soon. This is rock solid. You know, it's a make toy, so it's brilliant construction. Uh, and of course, it's you know a make toys piece that's done in their own art style. You know, similar to the uh, Cross Dimension series. So it's you know a very dynamic looking figure. Um, because he's got quite exaggerated <laughs> proportions. You know, very big and chunky. Uh, not like realistic classic proportions in the slightest. But the fantastic thing about that is he's incredibly poseable. So yeah. with proportions like that and the poseability, it makes him just look dynamic and every pose that he gets into is so much more accentuated. Uh, and, you know, the poseability sort of stuff, you know, double jointed knees, you know, multiple axis uh, of movement on the ankles, like, and that was the ability. He's got these <laughs> giant bloody pistons on the ankles that move when you move the ankles. Wow. Uh, you can hear that is some loud ratcheting there. Uh, he's got like this spring loaded piece on the abdomen. So that move, so that like sort of spring out of the way, lets him move at the waist and has like, he can bend almost 90 degrees on an ab crunch, which is just insane for a figure like this. Uh, he's nowhere near as tall as Titans Return for Max, but I still like him as a companion piece because he has the bulk. Like, I think he's a heavier figure, actually, and he's certainly oh, a lot wider, no a lot bulkier in the limbs. Um, and then if you want him to look like they're about the same size, then you put him in scorpion mode, and he's just enormous. Like <laughs> The size that this thing assumes once you get it transformed is nuts. Uh, he's also, because he's a city bot, he's got a temple mode. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, remember that. You know, big Ooh. open area, like the scorpion... Uh, legs become like these giant archways covering the uh, central area and uh, quite tongue in cheek. You look at the tip of the I was gonna ask there. You to, I was it's gonna just ask you the Decepticon symbol, but it's <laughs> like this three dimensional sculpt. So it's like almost like not quite IP infringing, but really it is. But Hasbro <laughs> didn't do anything about it. So whatever, it's there. And that really adds to the whole temple mode. Uh, yeah, beautiful construction. The sculpt on this thing is amazing. Like the color separation is just beautiful. So you know nothing gets lost. It's all you know. Oh, it's some you know gr- it's greens, uh, gra- uh, silvers, and like it's translucent orange, and it's all really well separated. So it makes him look quite visually striking. Uh, you know, lot fantastic transformation. Um, you know, a really original style piece. There's always extra details. Like, you know, I can pull off, like, detach his claws here. And you see there, I can <laughs> fold around a fully poseable, like, regular hand. There's just no reason other than that's a good feature to have. It's, like, yeah, I'm absolutely blown away by this piece. Uh, if you can get it for a decent price, absolutely buy this. This is <laughs> I don't, going I, don't, in, I doubt there'll ever be a better score for Knock. Without going into the finer details, the price, this compared to that that other one, the vinyl one. Oh, this is cheaper than a Sentinel version. So oh, okay. yep. it doesn't make it cheap. Like this is this cost me three hundred and seventy five bucks posted. Yeah. Um, which is like which is cheap for this figure. It'll normally run you about four fifty, five hundred. 
Mm-hmm. But even then, that's cheaper than the Sentinel version. And I yeah, and given that, I would say go for it. Um well maybe not go for it for, you know, the five hundred bucks, but if you you know, what tossing up between the two, get this over the Sentinel version because the value of it is just much more value there. I have a uh, challenge for you for bot shots next week. Get something of this in. I want to see this in Scorpion mode and Fort Max in City mode. This is just climbing over it. That sounds difficult, but I'll well, have a crack at it somehow. Well, I'll, see, I'll, be... I'll get it out and about somewhere and get a good shot of that. I, I wanted to use this for bot shots, and then I it, bot what shots is... just sort of slipped by me this week. But I do what want to the... get this in bot shots next week. What is the transformation like? Is it pretty simple or is it pretty complex in well, parts? Well, it's simple and quite clever. Like the way that his movement and mass is excellent. <laughs> you know, his torso telescopes out to allow you more room to do stuff. The way the legs, like the panel the legs are on uh, and the scorpion tower transforms, wonderful. Like his actual robot mode legs fold all the way over. Uh you know, it's quite a clever transformation. It's just really difficult because he's he's just massive. He's I was going to say, I've sent huge the bloody figure. <laughs> like it is physically difficult to transform this thing because it's just yeah, it, it's overwhelming. Mm. And, and you- I, I do have to recommend it as uh, yeah, the def- it's I'd call it the best Scorpion knock out there. Until the Titans return, the Titan one comes along. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's probably coming, isn't it? Like they're doing all the other ones from that pole, so we might as well. Yeah, I wonder if we'll have a headmaster or not. Anyway. Well, I imagine so. <laughs> yeah, you'd think it's part of it. Um, all right, I've got nothing again. <sighs> Pretty heavy for the night. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is that us then? Nothing for you? No, nothing for me. Um, actually meant to get a decent episode out of a slow news week and just the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be happy um, with that. (laughs) Heading to Kmart in another town tomorrow. So I'll have a look in there and see what's there. Last time I was there, I got that World War II Bumblebee. Interesting. uh, New Siege and Studio Series stuff. I'd just love to see something Siege out so I can see the figures in hand. (laughs) I'd, I'd like to get a prime. I'd like to get some other figures as well, but I just need to see them in stores. They're not they're not out here anywhere. So thank you, Hasbro. Yeah, I'm like there's one thing that's appealed to me with um Siege and I've already bought it. It's like that, that's that exclusive Megatron, so beyond that <laughs> So just Siege is gonna be an easy going line. It seems to hunt isn't as exciting as it used to be for Transformers. I think everyone just goes to online. It's like, oh, hey, oh, and, you know, I looked at this Megatron that got revealed and I was like, oh, when are we going to buy this? Oh, great. Retail price online. Buy that. Done. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't... I don't think I've bought something from a physical store. I don't think I've bought something from a physical store since 2017, to be honest. Wow. It's like, I legitimately think the th- last thing I bought might have been uh, deluxe barricade from the last night. That was a while ago. <laughs> oh, all right, ready to get here for the night. Um, if you want to find out more, we do do this recording on behalf of Transformers Australian Transformers Collectors Club Australia. Um, you can find everything we do over there at transformersca.com. Um, the podcast is over on Podbean. We can be found there at transformersweekly.podbean.com. Um, the RSS feed is in iTunes and everywhere else. And if you're listening to this, you're probably already listening to us via iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. Max, thank you for joining me tonight. Thank it's, you for uh, having me. Yeah, it, was a pretty, <laughs> it was a pretty shitty looking night looking at the uh, run sheet and what news was coming up. But I, I managed think we to spin good... some sort of tangential stuff out of it, you know, which is... Always yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Look at the news, discuss, processing, move on. Um, so we'll be back next week, hopefully with some more news. 
let's see some more of this MP Hound, shall we? Yeah, given that he's <laughs> been revealed since what Wonderfest last year. Yeah, and he is numbered as forty-five. Oh, that's bubble We don't have we don't have a number oh. count yet. He's just we have He's... nothing on him. He just keeps on getting. He's just been shown in a couple Wonderfests and no info whatsoever. And mm. at this Wonderfest, he was a grey prototype, whereas last Wonderfest he was coloured painted. Yeah. So, yep. God knows what's going on there. So until next week, when we don't get to see Limbo Hound, <laughs> <laughs> Max, thank you, and we'll be back next time. Catch you next time. See ya.